In 2005, the entire country watched in horror as an unavoidable natural disaster became a preventable national embarrassment. Kind of sounds familiar, right? As many of us knew, even back then, the havoc Hurricane Katrina unleashed in New Orleans was as much a result of government inaction as it was about the storm's historic landfall. The podcast Floodlines revisits that painful history of a beloved American city and brings it to life in vivid detail. Back to the devastation that gripped the city. Back to the political blunders that made national headlines. Back to that sense of frustration felt by all those communities who felt left behind. Back the mourning deaths and the loss of livelihoods and neighborhoods, especially and disproportionately black ones. And back to the marvelous acts of compassion and care that residents extended to each other, whether they were small acts of sharing water or driving, boating, and biking each other to safety. In the face of so much trauma and loss and when help would not come. With this impressive research and the force of his storytelling, Floodlines is a definitive account of Hurricane Katrina and its transformation of New Orleans. It is my honor to present Van R. Newkirk II, the Floodlines team, and the Atlantic with a Peabody Award. Congratulations. I just had this drive, like, before Katrina. Like, I just had my whole... I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the first person to go to college. I'm going to graduate from college. Like, I just had this drive, this this just bright light, and it's just like, it's just, after Katrina, it's just dim, dim, dim. Has anybody ever apologized to you? No. 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 What would you do if somebody did? If, if somebody, I don't know, from like the top came down and said, I'm sorry for what happened. Sorry for what? Like, the came matter. down from the top and said, I'm sorry for what happened to, to you at Katrina and this and that and da da da. Mm -hmm. After 14 years, I wouldn't even really care to hear it. Do you know um, Michael Brown, Brownie? The the chief of FEMA, Brownie. Heck of a job, Brownie. He, oh, he, the one with the glasses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You heard about him? Mm -hmm. What'd you think about him? It's like a lot of people didn't know what they were doing. Like, they was confused. How you get a job like that and you don't know what you're doing? The same with President Bush. You, he didn't even know what to do. How you somebody president and you can't even handle a national disaster? But you will oversee a country. Boy, stop. When we first started considering a podcast about Hurricane Katrina, we had to do a lot of thinking about what we could add to the story. The team was small. We couldn't offer something bigger and more comprehensive than documentaries and books that had been done on Katrina. There wasn't a whole lot of news to break 14 years after the flood either. But after interviewing people who'd been through Hurricane Katrina and seeing how much of a presence it still had in their lives, we thought that what we could offer was a considered, nuanced look at the human causes and human consequences of catastrophe through the eyes of those who'd seen it all up close. So we gave it a shot. Those conversations were two years ago. For me, it's been two years of hard work, of the ups and downs of grief and carrying on, and now a time of joy. It is such a wonderful feeling for us to be honored with the Peabody Award and to be counted among this incredible group of stories. I speak for our team, our EP, Catherine Wells, our producer, Alvin Melleth, David Herman, Kevin Townsend, and Scott Stotts, and Katie Rechtal, and all the people who provided music, sat in on edits, who produced art and our landing page. We are all grateful for this award. And to all the listeners and all the people who shared their stories with us, we are blessed by your support. Thank you. Thank you.